I did live here for many years. Even those of us who don't live in Aventura have been impacted by this city development. It's changed the landscape of South Florida. We all are here to enjoy the shopping, the traffic jams, the <laughs> houses of worship, the <laughs> restaurants, the bargains, <laughs> you name it. So we're all impacted by it in some way or another. But Stuart has been here almost from the beginning. He has worked here for many, many years as an interior designer, and he has had friends for many years from the very beginnings of when Turnberry was first built, and he's kept these friendships over the years. And um, he's been involved in a lot of charitable causes, and he is, you name it, he's done it. And above all, his passion. His passion for everything he dives into and he does, and you can see that in the classes here as well. So his um, commitment to us in this class is terrific. He's here all the time to help kids sit with people, listen to their stories, embroider his stories, we know, and just to have a good time. So, um, you know, when Aventura was just a little winkle in somebody's head, it, this was swampland. It was really more than swampland. It was bogs, land crabs, trees that fell down. It was really a devastation. And all of this is just 50 years ago. So it's incredible when you think about what, what has arisen in this area. And um, it was really just started as a drawing on the back of a napkin by the developer, who we all know the name of, and we appreciate everything he's done for us here. And, and it just went from there. So, Stuart, are you hiding out there? But I'm shy. <laughs> he's not. Hey guys, he's I'm so shy. He's, he's, I hope he'll be gentle with me. <laughs> I just, I have to tell you, you know, he's not just a pretty face. He's got just a little substance there. So we're going to have a good time. And thanks everybody for your patience in all of our changing of, of the you know, curriculum and dates and everything. Here we go. Okay, everybody. Let's Let's give a big hand for Jan Schneider. Yes. Because Jan Schneider, over the past couple of years, started asking me all these questions and blah, 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 about the history. And I would tell her, and then she said, well, why don't you give be a guest speaker at the V? And, uh, you know, I went to Debbie Lazar, who was George Berlin's secretary for ever in Turnberry Associates. And just so you know, George Berlin, may he rest in peace, was the father of Aventura because everything that we have today was permitted with Dade County. There was no Aventura. It was just Dade County in 1967, swampland. And he got everything approved, permitted, and inspected. So he, Debbie was the one that supplied me all this information. And so what I'm going to ask you all to do is to actually know a little bit about transformation. This group has been able to transform this particular room into an artist studio. But today, we're going to transform it into a time machine. And we're going to take you back. You okay, Jeanette? <laughs> we're going to take you back to mini skirts and go-go boots. And we're going to be in 1967. So Gabby is going to show, thank God for Gabby. She's going to be helping me because I'm not good with these all of these uh, computer things to show. But Gabby is going to show what we had here. So Gabby, hit it, mama. <laughs> All right, so what, what you heard Carol say, which I'm going to be telling you things and then reading you some information. But originally, Don Sofer's idea was drawn on a napkin. And we were fortunate enough to see it and just couldn't believe it. So after his father, the late Harry Sofer, after his father 
brought in partners like Arlen Realty, and they came up with what they call a site plan to actually go to Dade County. I don't know what's going on here with this. To Dade County and get the zoning. So even though you see the golf course and even though you see the buildings, a lot of them are actually built, but it was changed. So what caused the change? Okay, from 1967 to 1969, they did a lot of planning. And not only did they do planning, they had to do tremendous amount of engineering because it was a swamp. And they did things here in Aventura, like my old building in Turnberry, which I'm gonna exp explain because even though people are never really interested in, are you gonna come in here today? Because we're waiting for you. Yeah, okay, <laughs> so that's this is Gloria, and here's her uh, her security, her bodyguard. Um, so, so in a nutshell, things started to actually move in 1969. In that period of time, how many of you knew about North Miami Beach? This area. I did. Okay, you knew? You knew? You were here in 40. Watch the wire. Okay, so a lot of people, you know, knew about it and they started building Aventura. And even in this presentation, you're going to see pictures of the original models, you know, the low rises. And there were people like out on Long Island, the golfers, country clubs out the suburbs of Chicago they came in groups they came in groups and they bought these little apartments on the catwalks and there was nothing else the original country club was called Aventura Country Club and the temple was a storefront in the Aventura shopping center and on the high holidays we couldn't go to a storefront so we went to the garden room at the old country club. So this gives you a little idea of what went on in the 60s because it was all political and then it started to move and people started to move down and it was the beginning of a community, but it was still North Miami Beach. So I'm going to feed you some information and add into it. So this was a, what they call, Turnberry Associates gave out to banks and developers, which tells the entire story. So indulge me while I share this with you. Like Henry Flagler and Joseph Young, the developers of Aventura, Turnberry Island, had foresight to know what South Florida's future would hold. But unlike the pioneers of Miami to the south and Hollywood to the north, the developers of Aventura took slow, determined steps in creating the model city of excellence and affluence and beauty. The story begins in 1967. Remember I said put on your mini skirts and your go-go boots? When Don Sofer and his associates purchased 785 acres of submerged, underdeveloped swamp and marshland within Dade County, city of affluence and beauty. The next one. Okay, so what you see here is really absolutely absolutely nothing now this just to give you an idea where we are this is biscayne gardens which is really right where our our temple is over here which is of course is in here the original public shopping center and the site of the first country club but here's mystic point della yes this is where mystic <laughs> point is and i'm going to talk about how that came about and this would be the buildings that you go over the causeway. But this is all swamp. Can you, it's hard to imagine this gorgeous developed area that was just really mangoes and just nothing. 
The land facing the intracoastal waterway and overlooking Golden Beach on the Atlantic Ocean held promise. Stay tuned. <laughs> but required extensive conceptual planning and a detailed master plan in order to start the construction. Land planners have a good hue of San Francisco at Don Sofa's request produced the land use master plan, which included the championship golf courses designed by Robert Trent Jones. If you're a, golf, if you're a golfer, that really means something. <laughs> With the plans in place, Sofa brought in John Hancock Mutual Life Insurance Company as an, Earl, as an equity partner for financing in Arlen Properties. Arlen Properties, as you know, or may not know, was a major national company. And what they built were the original buildings. So when you come in uh, the main drive and you see the low rises, the townhouses, the uh, original properties that were smaller units, catwalks, that's what they, they built. So what happened once you crossed over 34th Court? Anybody know? <laughs> Something happened. Mangrove swamps soon would give way to massive dredge and fill project, which started with the permit issued in 1969. <laughs> so got your go-go boots on? Public zoning hearings were held by the Zoning Advisory Board in January 69. By February, they had reported its findings in the County Commission, and the Commission approved the master plan, granting development rights for the Aventure Turnberry Project. Soon, the dredging project began, drawing more than 5 million cubic yards of fill from Dumbfoundling Bay at the project's southern boundary. We know what's there now. Mystic Point. Yes. In granting its approval to Aventura, then named Biscayne Village, I never knew that, that this was originally Biscayne Village, the County Commission approved a, a, a mixed use plan for the area. Beautifully landscaped and winding roadways and waterways within the 785 acres landscaped provides access to more than 247 acres of high-rise residential development, 198 acres of commercial development, and 257 acres of recreational area, consisting primarily of a country club and two Robert Trent Jones championship golf courses. A restriction of the committee's approval guaranteed that the open green space would remain for at least 99 years. Oh, yeah, so right. I don't think we're gonna be around in yeah, 40 right. years, but if any of you are around in the 200, let me tell you, it's very possible to see more condominiums and homes on those golf courses because they, and, and, and we're already like 50 years, so there's like 40 years left. Question, how did you get the name Aventura? I, the land, the original development was Aventura, but could you ask me a question until we get done? Sure. I want everybody to. Okay, with approval from the county, state and federal government, Aventura developers moved forward with the project. The growth was slow, and, and deliberate, plan to meet the market needs of the surrounding communities without impacting negatively upon them. Although, although differences in outlook would divide the partnerships in 1977, leaving managing partner Don Sofer with the bulk of the prime properties Development was not altered from the original master plan. So as you head east on Country Club Drive and you pass 34th Court, you'll see El Dorado, Flamenco. And then all of a sudden, you have the Hamptons, the Terraces, the Landmark, Porta Vida, 
Turnberry Isle, and then on the other side, Mystic Point. So we're going to get, get to that in a minute. But they had split apart. And Don Sofer had those primary waterfront uh, locations, which were sold off to the developers of the Hamptons, the developers of the terraces, uh, the landmark, he owned Porta Vida, Turnberry Isle. So you want to know about Mystic Point? Glad you asked. <laughs> so Mystic Point was like a, a custody battle kind of a thing. So Arlen Realty morphed into other companies and other owners, investors, and that was known as the K site. And you know, uh, when we lived at Turnberry back in 1980, there was nothing. There was nothing there. There was no bridge. And the causeway was a, a, always a big conversation because to get to the beach, you have to go north to Hallandale Beach Boulevard oh, or south at 163rd Street. So the uh, bridge opened in 80, 83. But um, when they started talking about Mystic Point, uh, I personally called it Troll Village. <laughs> and when I was little, there was a story about a troll that lived under the bridge. <laughs> and the reason, it, and it caught on because the only way to get to Mystic Point was to under, under the bridge, you had to go into Turnberry, make a right, go under the bridge, and then you entered into this beautiful gated community that it is now. So that came uh, in, the, in the late 80s. But we're not there yet, so don't throw away those go-go boots. Uh, 